YouTube, so I am on the road again. I've been on the road a lot lately. <laughs> uh, I keep having to go up to Denver. Of course, one of the trips was for, for family. We did uh, a dinner with my sister and a dinner with my uh, mother-in-law and sister-in-law and all those folks. <laughs> um, so, the, the reason for the trip back up to Denver, this is, I think, my third trip this month, um, is I'm going up to get more tires for our wind block. And it's taking a lot more tires than I thought it would, but at the same time, they seem to be working pretty well, so I am hopeful. Um, projects that are coming up. I have a mobile shed design, semi-mobile shed design that I'm working on that I will be uh, hopefully getting started on maybe this week, I don't know, uh, might be next week. Um, <laughs> we are coming into the coldest months of the year, so I'm not sure how much outside work I'm going to get done. And if I can't get the mobile shed built, then I probably won't be working on the tractor either because I've got to take the steering box apart, among other things. And I don't want the wind to blow a bunch of dirt into there. So I can't take it apart unless I get the mobile shed built. But I think the shed will go up pretty quick. And we'll see how that works. I saw a dog lying on the side of the road. 
and he had a green collar on. And I don't always stop, but the thing is, is that when an animal gets hit by a car, sometimes it's not the impact itself that kills them. Um, sometimes they die of shock. So if you get to them fast enough, there's a chance that you can, in fact, save their life. Um, because you can get to them to a vet. So... I drove by this dog and it, it, it kind of looked like he was already gone, but I, I was kind of thinking about it and I was on the highway, so when the next turn came up, I decided I was going to go back. So I had to turn off the street, get back on the highway going the other direction, then I had to go back past the spot because... Uh, <coughs> because it was a divided highway. So then I found another street, had to turn around and go back again. So I pulled over and I got out and I walked over to this dog and it, it was immediately apparent that he was gone. Um, he had been struck uh, in the side of the head and it had uh, shattered his jaw and I, uh, I was uh, in law enforcement as a reserve officer for you know 15 years and I, I kind of looked things over and I could tell that the vehicle that hit him was traveling at a high rate of speed coming out of town I mean they were doing at least 65, maybe even more than that, which they shouldn't have been because the speed limit hadn't changed yet. Anyhow, so I I knelt down next to this dog. He had the, he had the collar on, and he had a tag on, and the tag said, Bruno uh, needs medication Please return if found. And I thought. I turned the tag over, and there was a, a owner name, telephone number, address. And I thought, if it was one of my dogs, I would want to know. So I called the number, and I got this lady, and she wasn't home. Um, and I told her that I, I found, I, I told her that I had bad news, that I had found Bruno in the highway. Um, but I guess I wasn't real clear. Um, she didn't speak the greatest English. I mean, she had, a, she had, a, she spoke English, but she had a really heavy accent, so it was kind of hard to understand her. But, um... Anyways, she, uh, I asked her, I said, do you want me to take him home? And she said, yes, please. She said, I'll have my mom meet you there. I said, okay. So I hung up with her, and I, I picked this dog up, and it occurred to me that, um, for one, he was still bleeding. Uh, most likely his, his heart may have still been pumping, but... Uh, I can tell you right now, his eye, the one that I did see, was dilated. I didn't flip him over and look at the other side. The other side was the side he got hit on. But the, the side that was towards me, um, the eye was dilated, and he was gone. I, I would say the impact, besides the facial damage, um, most likely uh, also broke his neck, would be my guess. Anyhow, so I, I picked him up. I put him in the back of my truck and I drove over to this address and there was an older lady and an older man there. I'm assuming it was the mother and father. The problem is they did not speak any English and when they saw the dog in the back of the truck they, they kind of freaked out which is understandable. Um, 
we're going up a big hill right now. Anyway, um, so I, I was trying to tell them what, you know, what had happened, um, that I had found him on the side of the road, but I, they, I don't think they understood me. Um, the woman, the, the older lady, eventually got on the phone and she uh, apparently called the daughter. And after a, a brief conversation with her daughter in Spanish, um, she handed me the phone. And I took the phone and the daughter was already distraught. And she asked me, she said, is he dead? And I kind of just... Um, well, I, I guess I should say about the same time, about the same time a guy in a truck pulled up. And it turns out that was her cousin that, that pulled up in the truck. But when she asked me, she said, is he dead? I said, yes, yes, he's dead. And I'm sorry. And of course she was uh, very upset and we had a little more of a conversation, but honestly, she was upset, and it was really hard to understand what she was saying, but towards the end of the conversation, she did thank me several times, and after I got off the phone with her, I looked at the cousin, and um, he, he spoke good English, so, um, you know, he, I, I, I kind of looked at him, and he said, well, I think I'll just put him in the back of this truck and take him over to the shop. I don't know what that, you know. Um, or I guess he said back behind the shop. So I'm assuming that he probably had an idea of where he was going to bury, bury Bruno. So I said, okay. So he went back to open his truck and my truck was already open because um, I, had, I, I had lowered the tailgate. So um, the old the older guy, um, I'm, I'm assuming the father, he was going to help me carry the dog, but uh, the thing is, my, my personal dog, she, she weighs 77 pounds, and my other dog, that's my husband's dog, um, she's a little over 50 pounds, and I often move hay bales that are 85 pounds, so I, I kind of just scooped, scooped Bruno up. Um, he probably weighed, I would guess, around 40, about 40 pounds. He was a little bit underweight, but um, he was also on medication. His, his tag said he was on medication. So um, other, other than being a little underweight, he, he actually looked in, in good condition. Um, his nails were all trimmed and, you know, and... I, I scooped him up and I, I took him back to the other truck and put him in and uh, just patted him and told him rest in peace. What else can you do? But um, I don't know. Um, I guess I guess the moral of this story, you know, is not necessarily you know keep your dogs in in a fenced yard you know I, I don't like dogs on chains uh, our dogs do have a fenced yard but even then even then I I've had my dog I've had them get out the front door before you know and we don't we thankfully don't really live close to a highway but there are some rather busy streets or they can be at certain times of day so it just got me to thinking a lot of people don't put their their name address and phone number on dog tags anymore because they're sorry I had to check my tires um, just to make sure that they're doing okay this this highway is not in great shape anyway um, you know pe people don't put their their information on dog tags anymore now you might have you might have a dog tag from a vet, you know, with the dog getting the rabies and stuff, and, and you can contact the vet and give them a description, and maybe they, you know, know the dog off the top of their head, but, um, you know, maybe they don't. Depends on how many dogs they see, um, how many clients they have. 
but I gotta turn on my headlights here, it's getting dark. But it just got me to thinking, uh, my dogs, they don't have their name or telephone number or an address or anything on their dog tags. And I need to remedy that. I think at the very least, it should be the dog's name and a telephone number that somebody could contact you at. And that way, you know, and I'm planning, I'm planning on putting, getting a collar that actually has like a plate that has an engraving on it because our dogs have more than once been playing too rough and torn off their dog tags. So I, I think a collar with a, a plate on it um, is probably the best solution to that. Bumpy road. Uh, anyway, um, that was kind of the moral of the story. I, I tried I tried to return, record this earlier, and I just, I don't know, it, it really hit me hard. Um, I actually started crying, but, you know, I guess I could say, my thought is Bruno was a good dog. Again, going back to my law enforcement experience and looking at what happened, he was crossing the highway to head back home, I think. I, I mean, I, I, that's my theory. Because of the direction that he was crossing was heading back towards where his house was. And, you know, it's just, it's a bummer. It really is. Uh, I love dogs. I love our dogs, you know. And my daughter, she has her dog um, microchipped, and she has her cats microchipped in case, in case they ever got out. You know, um, they don't, they don't really have collars with like their name on it, but um, she has them microchipped. And I think that's that's probably a good idea for our animals. I think that's even a good idea for our horses. And the reason being, the reason I think that is because earlier this summer, we had that tornado touchdown not too far from home. I mean, I guess it was about 20 miles, 20 or 25 miles north, but that's, <laughs> that's still too close for comfort. So I'm thinking that I, I need to get everybody... Uh, you know, uh, not my microchip. Um, because if our property was ever hit by a tornado and it, you know, tore down the fences or, you know, ripped open the house and the animals got out, hopefully they would get out, um, that there would be at least be some way for somebody to get a hold of us if they found the animals. Um, and for the vet to check, you know, if horses get loose, they don't always, you know, they don't have collars on them. Um, and you never, you never leave a halter on a horse. Don't, don't ever do that, please. Um, they, they can get into a lot of trouble with a halter. Um, and then, you know, it's just very dangerous. So please don't leave a halter on a horse. Uh, but a lot of times they don't have a halter on, um. So there's no real way to identify them unless they have a brand. Uh, ours are all Arabian and Thoroughbreds. They don't have brands on them. So the only other way that somebody could check is a microchip. And just for reference, microchips are usually in the neck right above, right near the top um, where the mane comes out. And they're generally about a third to a half way, not a third way up the neck. One third to halfway, I will say, up the neck, and that's uh, that's where you check for a microchip on a horse. Our, our vet, uh, one of our vets, didn't actually know that they never actually scanned a horse for a microchip, so uh, 
we, we had to look it up so that they could scan our racehorse, um, retired racehorse, for the microchip. But anyway, that's that's where you find a microchip on a horse. So, yeah, Bruno just kind of got me to thinking that um, should the animals ever get loose for whatever reason, that we need to have some way for somebody to get a hold of us and have their name on there because if you, know, you can't change the past. Um, I wish I'd been a few minutes earlier because I think the accident happened maybe 10 or 15 minutes before I got there. And that's that's really sad because if I see a dog running loose on the highway, especially one with a collar, I will often stop to try to catch the animal. Um, and who knows, maybe, maybe I could have saved him. But that's the past, and I, I wasn't there, and he got hit. Um, and I feel, I feel bad for the family because I, I don't think this was like negligence on their part. Um, I think he just got loose. So anyway, that is the sad story of Bruno dog I met but never got to meet. And since the sun is going down, it will be nearly impossible to record in this vehicle because <laughs> it'll be too dark. So um, I think the rest of this trip is going to be listening to music. All right, and uh, I will show you the load uh, probably tomorrow. Because there is no way that I'm getting those doors open because some of the tires fell down and they kind of jammed against the doors so now the doors are kind of jammed against the bar um, that holds them closed so I will have to I may have to unload from the other door we have a an escape door on our horse trailer and I, I may actually have to unload from that door if I can't get these open so um, yeah all right, so I didn't get a chance to show you guys what happened last night. I was about two or three miles from home and uh, <laughs> blew a tire. So I will have to get a replacement tire, um, especially before I do any more of these loads. And I can't even show you, come on, get out of there. Go. That's bad for you. Go. Go on. Good grief. Stay out of there. Little one. I, I can't really show you because I can't get the back doors open right now. And unfortunately, you can't see through the windows. But I overloaded this thing badly. And these tires, they're not rated for that kind of load. And that's probably why I blew one. So I will have to buy some new tires, minimum of 10 ply. I'd actually like to find 12 ply tires to put on this trailer if I'm gonna be doing any more loads. And the other problem with this trailer is uh, most likely the axles aren't rated for this, this size of a load either. This trailer probably weighs at least 6,500 pounds. And I know it's a four horse trailer, but they're basically assuming that each horse weighs a thousand pounds. And then you're gonna have maybe a couple hundred pounds worth of um, equipment, saddles and tack and uh, feed for the horses, water. And when you take that into account, the axles really are not, are, are probably not. I'm gonna crawl underneath there just to see exactly what their rating is, but I'm guessing that this is not rated for more than maybe 12,000 pounds at the maximum. And the tires, uh, 10 ply tires can go up to 
I think it's a little over 11,000 pounds. So they're not even really rated for four horses. So a trailer like this, you'd have to have 12 ply or better on them. And those are expensive tires, let me tell you. Um, oh God, the cats are just all over me today. I already fed them this morning. Oh, here, I got a window that's open. So I don't know how well you can see it, but this thing is just packed. And I'm gonna have to make sure not to pack it that bad again. Um, just because I don't want to destroy the axles on the trailer. Anyhow, I've got to get this thing unloaded. That's, uh, that's kind of my day. Okay, guys. So all of these tires that are sitting here. We're in the back of that trailer. I didn't count how many there actually were. Uh, mostly because I was trying to get them unloaded. And I am now out of breath. So. Uh, most of these tires are complete trash. Um, they're either worn down to nothing or have holes in them, stuff like that. And there's some of what we'll be doing with them. This, uh, this isn't complete yet. I've actually got to fill them with dirt. I threw that up temporarily because we had a big windstorm coming in. Um, there's some other things you can do with these though. Actually, there's a lot of things you can do with these. So I will be getting into that. Oh, and that stack back there by that horse trailer. Yeah, you can't even see the whole thing, but that was the part of the first load. And some of the first load are also in these wind blocks here. I have no idea how many tires are in here. There's a lot. So. All right. And this, this was too much. For that trailer it really was i will have to uh figure out something else to get more tires yes i brought them all home just to be a scratching post for you that's batty oop <laughs> Anyhow, um, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification if you would, please. And I hope you have a great day and take care of your animals and be safe.